anti Greta. Well, we're joined live by Naomi Zipt herself, uh, the self styled climate realist. Naomi, thanks for coming on. Good to have you on the program today. Um, we've all heard Hi, about. Thank uh, you so much for inviting me. Yeah, no problem. And thank you for giving me a platform to speak about climate realism. Many people don't want to listen to us anymore. Yeah, well, happy to have all, uh, all points of view here. And we've had uh, climate activists on the program uh, many times on here as well. Uh, it's the first time, though, we've had a, uh, a, a climate realist, uh, which you obviously describe yourself as. What does that mean, being a climate realist? What does that involve? Well, most people um, on the site of climate alarmism, if you will, label us the climate deniers. And that is a term that I really dislike because it sounds like we don't uh, really look into the science, we don't do our research, and we just hate the planet, we just want to destroy this earth, and we're just selfish and ignorant. And that's not what we're about. We're about um, being scientific skeptics and looking into more sensible um, yeah, ways to improve the environment, to be more... Um, in line with our values uh, when it comes to interacting with nature. And so, um, yeah, that's what climate realism is about. It's about scientific skepticism and having more discussions in the scientific sphere again. Mm. And just before you came on, we, we presented that report about a survey uh, in the UK which says children are having nightmares, one in five are having nightmares, having trouble sleeping because they're so worried um, about climate change. Um, does that surprise you that, that, that kids are so worried about what's happening to the planet? No, it doesn't surprise me at all, unfortunately. Um, and that's what we call climate alarmism. Because people like Greta Thunberg, and I'm sure she's a very nice girl, and I don't want to shame her in any way, and she's innocent in all of this herself, I believe. Um, they are spreading panic uh, amongst so many young people. Um, they are tearing apart relationships because um, people are fighting um, about... Um, who is right in all of this, who is wrong in all of this, and we're not allowed to speak anymore. So people are genuinely worried about the planet and they think that um, their grandparents and parents are destroying this planet. And that is so horrible to see um, because it takes away their hope for the future. And um, so many young people have their own passions and would like to uh, pursue um, their, their passions in the future and work, work a great job. And now all they're concerned about is climate change. That is really sad to me, to be honest. There's clearly, uh, there's clearly an element of panic about, about climate change, not only among young people, among many adults as well, I know, are worried about what's happening. Um, do you think that's unnecessary? Do you think that's unjustified? Yes, I do think so, because I, I looked into these topics myself and once I peeled back each layer of propaganda, if you will, about climate change, I came to the conclusion that really nobody seems to be talking about the core science anymore. Everybody seems to believe that just because there's this fake consensus out there, um, allegedly 99% of scientists agree that climate change is real and climate change is man-made, um, this study is absolutely... Um, way too vague because of course climate change is real. Climate change has always been real. The climate has been changing for millions of years. But we need to be more precise in our questions and ask things like, um, are CO2 emissions actually that destructive to the planet? Are they really um, the cause of global warming? Or are there other factors playing into this? Like, for example, um, the impact that the sun has on the climate and uh, water feedback, water, feedback uh, water evaporations. Um, there are so many other factors that are way stronger than just CO2 emissions. So it is ridiculous to believe that humans could have such a big impact on the climate. Uh, we cannot mess with nature in that way. At least that's mm. the conclusion that I've come to from doing my own research. And the claims that the IPCC puts out there are mostly just based on climate models. So really just computer models, computer games that they came up with themselves. Mm. I'm happy you, you mentioned science because... Uh, there is a lot of evidence, a lot of consensus among many scientists around the world that, you know, man-made activity is contributing to climate change. Obviously, I don't, I, as you said, nobody's arguing that climate change does happen, but these scientists are saying that what we're doing is damaging the environment. Is there a lot of evidence that supports your position that, uh, you know, humans aren't actually doing that much damaging things to the planet? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, and I would say that actually most 
um, scientists who uh, belong to this uh, alleged consensus, they don't really know about the CO2 emission science themselves. But those are just scientists who work in different fields, like, for example, um, looking into um, what are the best alternative energy sources. So most people don't really concern themselves with the core science anymore, uh, what can CO2 emissions actually do. So what the IPCC says is that um, CO2 emissions in a lab experiment, they do cause some amount of warming, that is true, and I agree with that, absolutely, um, But uh, as it is a greenhouse gas. Um, but first of all, um, it is just a very minor greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. Uh, most of the green most people don't even know that the main greenhouse gas in the atmosphere is actually water, water vapor. And um, then the man-made emissions, uh, CO2 emissions, are making just a, making up just a tiny fraction of um, of CO2 emissions in general. And what the IPCC claims now is that this warming effect in the in the lab experiment that you get from um, emitting CO2 into the air um, is four times as strong in the atmosphere as it would be in the lab experiment. And this number, this four times, this um, this factor is merely based on those climate models. And the problem with those models is they're basically just computer games and that's not based on real world data. And um, it is uh, it is basically just they chose the, uh, their own uh, amplification factors um, to to justify this number, this um, it's four times as strong in the atmosphere as it would be in uh, in a lab experiment, and it's just based on um, yeah, really just they are they are uh, blowing up this um, effect that is so insignificant mm. in a lab experiment and without really justifying it scientifically. Sure. Um, I want to talk a bit about um, about Greta Thunberg. I think y y you knew that was that was going to come up. Um, you say you're you're not anti Greta, right? But that's what some media have called you the the anti Greta. Um, at the same time, uh, some people are saying you're just rephrasing some of her slogans. You're often been critical of of her movement, at least. Um, aren't you making this uh, a, a sort of personal uh, battle here between between yourself and Greta Thunberg? Well, kind of, because I do, of course, understand the comparison. And it was a German media outlet that started this anti-Greta thing in the first place. And it was to um, to portray me as kind of this evil anti-Christ uh, on the left, uh, on the right. And uh, I really disliked that. But then I thought, let's just have fun with it. And let's just claim this label and... Um, well, if the media wants to portray as anti-Greta, then go ahead. But you don't stay for the anti-Greta. You stay for the Naomi Zeit. You come for the anti-Greta, you can stay for the Naomi Zeit. Because I am not against Greta. I think she is probably a super nice individual, innocent in all of this. And uh, I don't have anything against her. It's just that she is not about the science. She's basically just about uh, spewing panic and uh, telling people to change their lives entirely, um, uh, demanding that governments uh, control the lives of uh, the people on this earth everywhere. And uh, that, I believe, has nothing to do with science and uh, skepticism anymore. And that's really what's so awful about all of this. And just how some people have said that, um, you know, Greta Thunberg is just being used. She's, she's a project of environmental activists or, you know, as you, as you said, left-wingers. Some people have said you yourself are a project of the opposite, of anti-environmental uh, conservatives. How, how does that make you feel? I, I really hate that this notion is out there because I know for myself that I do everything on my own. I write my own speeches whenever ever I give an interview. And most people don't even know this. Uh, the people that I work with from a Heartland Institute, for example, they don't know um, when I write my speeches. They don't read it beforehand. Um, so it's all just based on my own mind. And uh, I'm having fun with all of this. I, I started my YouTube channel on my own. Um, this is basically all just what I'm really passionate about and I don't get tons of money for what I'm doing. Uh, I live at home with my family and I get a lot of support from my mother and my grandmother and that is just fantastic. And I wish that people would just listen to my main mes message instead of reading what the media has to say about me, my funding and uh, what goes on behind the scenes. 
um, I'm happy to debate anyone mm. all the time. So you, you said it's interesting. You said you, you, you write your own speeches, which is, uh, you know, very interesting, somebody uh, so young. Um, uh, who's helping you spread your, your message then? I mean, you've achieved quite a lot of, of popularity or of media attention. Um, are you saying that's all done on your own with a bit of help, you know, from, from, and support from your family? Um, I started my YouTube channel completely on my own. I had nobody who could help me with editing or anything like that. I do everything myself. And then I started working with the Heartland Institute um, at the beginning of this year. And uh, but all they do is just they help me uh, organize something so uh, the media can reach out to them and then they send it over to me. Um, and yeah, basically I schedule everything else myself and uh, I just get support like uh, I get the opportunity to speak. I got the opportunity to speak at CPEC and I get some other speaking opportunities. Um, but yeah, the rest, all the brain stuff is basically myself. Going back to, to the big question, to climate change, we all agree climate change is real, it's happening, it's having an effect uh, on the planet, a negative effect. Uh, Greta and, and her camp, they certainly have their ideas, their plans about what needs to be done. What is your plan to tackle climate change? Well, I don't actually agree that it's having um, a negative effect on the planet. It's just a natural phenomenon. Um, so the climate has always been changing. And um, of course, we will always experience natural catastrophes. And what can we do about them? Certainly not reducing CO2 emissions. That's the wrong way to, um, to deal with natural, natural catastrophes. Of course, those are horrible, but we, we will never be able to fully prevent them. We can protect ourselves from nature by using energy efficiently. And, uh, for example, we live in houses because we want to protect us from, uh, from cold or too hot weather outside. So we do actually need um, energy, ironically, and uh, fossil fuel energy as well, because um, and we could also look into uh, alternatives like nuclear energy. That would be a great idea. Um, but we just need to make sure that we don't rely on um, on energy sources that are not reliable or cheap in the long run, because we also need to concern ourselves with energy poverty. There are so many countries that are really poor, third world countries, and those people, they really need access to cheap and reliable energy sources, and that will help them get out of poverty. And the same goes for our own countries. If we put, uh, if we enslave people with huge uh, amounts of taxes that will just um that will just destroy society entirely and uh what about the what about the dangers of a complete blackout um mm. if we lose access to energy all of the sudden then we're screwed so i think those are topics that we should concern ourselves with rather than climate alarmism OK, that's all we've got time for. Naomi Zipe, the self-styled climate realist. Thanks for coming on. It's been a certainly interesting interview. Thanks for your time today. Thank you so much.